I'm Cynthia Mulligan at Young and Clay, St. Clair. This is one of the busiest intersections in the city, and just across the street over here is a quiet vigil that has received very little attention in Toronto. It's a small group of women, and they've been on that sidewalk night and day for almost, more than two weeks now. And a viewer challenged me, asking me why I hadn't come out to find out more about this. So I took him up on that challenge and spent the afternoon discussing a very difficult topic with these women, youth suicide in the Indigenous community. My name is Sulin Manoni Cornfoot. Sulin is one of six women holding this vigil, day and night, around the clock for the past 19 days. They want to bring awareness to youth suicides in the Indigenous community. The latest cluster at Pekanjikum, a reserve near the Manitoba border last month. It was once called the suicide capital of the world. Two of the five came from one household, which was the older sister and a younger sister. My mind said, I can't even fathom the loss of one child, let alone two. Health Canada data shows the suicide rate for Indigenous youth is five to seven times higher than non-Indigenous youth. Since this vigil began, another young person in their community has taken their life. Someone from the Office of Indigenous and Northern Affairs, where they are holding the vigil, came out to tell them. They said, Sigrid, we came out here to tell you that another child has died. And we wanted you to know first, all of you, so that you wouldn't find out on social media. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking as a mother and as a community member. It's outrageous for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old kids to be thinking of suicide. It's, it's unbelievable. And for the kids in Attawapiskat last year when we were here to make suicide packs together where 11 kids chose to take their lives all at once. It's, it's unheard of. Has anything changed? Not in my view. The women say many people walking by have offered food, water, and compassion. Others, though, have been dismissive and harsh. Some of the comments that come at us um, can be traumatizing and um, kind of difficult to answer over and over again. but. What comments would those be? Well, like, why don't they just uh, leave their territory? Why don't they leave the reservation, come and assimilate into Toronto or Montreal? Or... And what do you say to that? I just show them pictures, like of Apawatiskat, because we have friends there. And I say, I pull them up and I say, Will you, would you leave this place? That's their home. So far, they say they don't know how much longer this vigil will last, at least until they get some sign the government is listening and ready to take meaningful action. The province announced it is sending 20 full-time mental health workers to Pekanjikum. They say, though, it's not enough. Do you think four people sitting on a sidewalk in downtown Toronto can make a difference? One person sitting on a sidewalk can make a difference doesn't need numbers. We don't need numbers. All we need is someone who cares. Now, City News reached out to Carolyn Bennett. She's the minister, the MP, MP for this riding. She's also the minister of Indigenous and Northern Affairs. We were hoping for a comment on this story, on this vigil. We have yet to receive a response.